Okay, starting off turn number three with Arjun, and right away I see this card. I remember wanting to use it. So we're going to take and use it at the start of our hero phase to regain two hit points, and then flip over the card. And then maybe we'll get a treasure item that'll let us turn it back over at some point. So that's going to take Arjun back up to eight. So he did not need a healing surge, and... I think we'll probably do similar to what we did before. We'll move Arjun. Um, yeah, we'll have Arjun move over to the spider and try to take it out with Tide of Iron. I was thinking we'd have we'd use a Trapping Strike to pull the spider to us. Uh, we could do that, but either way, we're heading this direction. So let's go. And Arjun has a movement speed of five, which that determines you know how many squares he can move. So. He's going to go one, two, three, four. So he's got uh, all the speed he needs with movement left over. So he's going to move adjacent to that spider and then attack it with Tide of Iron, which does the exact same thing as Trapping Strike, except it doesn't pull the uh, spider towards us. So that's going to be a plus eight. And that's a nine. Yeah, nine. Okay, that's going to be enough to hit. 9 plus 8 is 17. Spider's AC is 15, so that's going to take it down. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to mix this around a little bit. So we're going to make a pile of 5 EXP. So there we go. Now that's 5 experience. We'll start another pile here for 5 experience, so that if I need to cancel an encounter, I can just draw that stack of 5. So before I mess with all that, I want to check one thing. Whenever a hero explores, well, what can I move this on token? When, when you move for the rest of the encounter, right? If the hero. Okay, I was thinking we had to take damage if we canceled, but that must have been the last adventure. That must have been Clax. So we take down the spider, which means we will get a treasure. And it's going to be item of rejuvenation. Flip over one of your unused powers. Boy, yeah, we're going to use that. Uh, we have to use it during our hero phase. Are we still in our hero phase? Let me think about that. Yeah, because we haven't... We're, we're still in that hero phase section. So let's go ahead and use this right away. So we'll put this into our uh, items that we have collected that one we had to waste, but this one we got to utilize. And he's just going to flip this back over. So I'm going to put this again up by Arjun so that I remember on the next turn to use it again. Just read that one more time. Flip up one of your unused, one of your used powers. Yeah, okay. So let's update for Arjun. So he, uh, he did move. He attacked. He got treasure. And used the treasure... And then now we start the exploration phase, so he will explore because he is on an unexplored edge. So let's draw a tile for Arjun, and it's going to be a black triangle, so we'll have an encounter, but we can cancel it. Let's draw a monster for Arjun. And it's going to be a zombie. I like seeing zombies come out. They're the weakest creature in the game. They have the lowest AC and the lowest attack. So he got a black tile, got a Zom, and we'll have an encounter. He, we've killed that Cobalt Skirmisher, and we've killed that Spider. But now we have a Zombie. Okay, we do have an encounter, so let's uh, see what encounter we're going to have. And if it's terrible, we can cancel it. Attack each hero on the active hero's tile. Yeah, we'll play this one out because the worst thing that happens is we get slowed down. And there are far worse encounters than that. And this only applies to Arjun, so it's another reason to play it. It's a plus eight, so it's going to attack Arjun. So hopefully we get a decently low roll, so it just misses. And that's a nine. That's just, that's just, that is going to just hit. Nine plus eight is 17. And that is Arjun's AC, and I don't think... Um, yeah, we don't have anything that will help us. Yeah, so Arjun is now slowed. 
So I'll put down here that he slowed. And so that was the encounter. Now the zombie's gonna activate. If the zombie is within one tile, and it is, it's gonna move adjacent to the closest hero and attack with the rotting fist. So it's gonna move. Now, yeah, I was gonna, there's, there's some debate about how to move. The, the rules clearly say that you move like bone pile to bone pile, but um, in the case where, you know, the, the monster has to move so that it's adjacent to, you know, for example, if Arjun was back here, obviously you can't move bone pile to bone pile because then you're not adjacent. So my question is like, you know, is this the correct way? My reading of the rules would say that you, you move bone pile to bone pile when you can. And in this case, the bone pile happens to be adjacent. So, so it, it doesn't matter, but that's just something that's not clear to me on the rules. So it's going to attack with the plus five. And if it hits, it'll do one damage if it misses nothing. And that's going to hit. So the Rotting Fist does one damage to Arjun, taking us down to seven. That's the end of his villain phase, so we're going to start off the next turn with Alyssa. Now, she is not slowed, so she can move. Now, what I... All right, I know what I'm going to do. Alyssa's going to move over here so that she's adjacent to the zombie, and then she can use her scout. Actually, she can even move here. But she's got plenty of speed for that, so she's got one, two... And remember, we can move through heroes. We can't move... We can't... You can't move to a hero's square and stay there, but you can move through a hero. You cannot move through monsters. So one thing she could do would be one, two, three, four. She could also go one, two, three, four, five, six. Either way, we get to the same place, and we don't even have to be on an unexplored edge. But mainly, we just want to make sure that she's adjacent to the zombie, and clearly she can get there. And she's just going to ping that zombie, just knock it out. So that takes out the zombie. And place the zombie on the table. So Alyssa didn't use a surge. She moved, she attacked, she killed, so she does get a treasure. Let's draw that treasure item for Alyssa. And she gets a short rest. She can flip up one of her unused powers. This is a bummer. Uh, she doesn't have any unused powers. We could give it to Arjun. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any unused powers either, so this goes to waste, complete waste, because this isn't a treasure item, so it doesn't even count towards one of our 12. Hate when that happens. Um, okay, now she will explore. Uh, we're just going to go here. And it's a white tile again, so that means we have to move the sun token forward again. Uh, and she'll get a monster. Blazing Skeleton, one of the worst in the game. So we'll take the Blazing Skeleton and place it on the bone pile with the newly placed tile. And let's update. So she explored, she got a white tile. It's our second white tile. So. Um, why did I put here that we didn't place a monster? Maybe I'll have to look back at the video and see why I did that. Anyway, she got a blazing skeleton. And no encounter. So we got a blazing skeleton. So since there's no encounter, the blazing skeleton's going to activate right away. It's really bugging me, like, why did I do that? Maybe, maybe, was that the time I got the treasure card and I put it on top? No, that was for the encounter. Hmm, I'm gonna have to look at the video and see why I did that. So, the Blazing Skeleton is going to attack every hero on this tile, which is just Alyssa. And it's gonna have a plus seven, and it's gonna do damage either way. So, let's hope it misses. And that's a 13, so that's going to hit. So that does two damage to Alyssa, taking her down to five. And that will be the end of Alyssa's uh, villain phase. So that will be the end of turn number three.
and I'm going to review the video to see what happened in turn number two because I'm really curious. 